The Goofy, The Talented, The Charming, Jermaine Clement. Jermaine Atia Mahana Clement. I like the soft J there. That's a lovely handle. Thank you. I don't use all of it. Yeah. You well, don't where, have to say the whole Where do they all come from? Well, it's a tradition in my family to have at least one Māori name. And um, I got two. I think they were just ideas that my mum liked. You know, the universe, warmth. My son's middle name is Irai after uh, my great, great, great grandfather. Can you just tell me who you've been mistaken for? Joaquin Phoenix with a beard. Benicio del Toro. I can see that. Yeah, this is my impression of him. Looking off to the horizon. That, I, that's, I get that. And I'm hoping I get to play his brother one day. Oh yeah, tonight we're gonna make love. You know how I know? Because it's Wednesday. In 2008, he made the top 100 sexiest people by Aussie magazine Who. Were you surprised? Uh, very surprised. And He's been humble. Well, I'm very surprised that no one said that again. Jermaine was raised by his mum in Kuiya in the Wairarapa. Was Hollywood on the cards? Not Hollywood, but I knew I wanted to make things. Spent a lot of time with my friends trying to get a camera, and no one had ever lend us one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we always wanted to make things. A couple of times, um, like a lot of kids growing up in areas like that, uh, might have broken the law a little bit, and that sure teaches you, I mean, for some hang people. Hang on, hang on, just read one. <laughs> uh, just dumb things, you know, like breaking into places. Were you, uh, looking, for, were you looking for a camera or what? Just didn't really know um, what we were doing. Trying to have fun. Thought, you know, abandoned building or whatever. And then, you know, turns out someone owns that as well. Don't break into buildings. That's my advice. So your mum is Māori. Mm -hmm. And what's your iwi? Ngāti Kahunu. Were you going to the marae? Did you have much involvement with te ao Māori when you were growing up? When I was a kid, yeah. Um, with my grandma, um, she would take us. And we had a few marae we'd visit. And sometimes she would just say, we're going to visit your auntie. And then you might be in the car for five hours going somewhere up north. Um, and then be in some old lady's house um, talking. And then we go to family reunions, which I, you know, I loved as a kid, actually. Much te reo around then? Um, kaore. Not really. Uh, my grandma didn't speak Māori. She was of the generation that um, would be punished at school if she's, you know, if she, that was her first language, but, uh, you know, <laughs> they get hit if they spoke. I know that's what happened to my dad too. Sucked, eh? Yeah. 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 Um, what about you? you Sorry, a... get, thinking about my poor grandma. Oh. Yeah. Tell me about her. What was um, special I don't about her? Now. <laughs> no, that's all right. Well. Um, what was her name? What was your nana's my name? Cutter. Eh? My cutter. My cutter. My cutter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's a funny lady, like, and um, sometimes intentionally, like, she'd come up with a good joke and sometimes completely unintentionally. Mm. Um, and uh, uh, I loved hanging out with her, you know. Did her sense of humour influence you in any way? Well, yeah, because, um, I mean, the basic idea of humour is to surprise, and she was always surprising, you know, with what she would come up with. In 2016, your father spoke quite candidly about being absent from your life and his struggles with alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, how, how was that for you? Yeah, I didn't read it or hear it, but uh, we would talk about that together. Um, and I understood that it was, you know, better for me and my brothers that that, that stress whatever he was going through uh, wasn't in our lives so much. And sometimes he would be there and sometimes he wouldn't. It's quite typical for fathers of the time. I feel like my generation of dads, even if they split with their um, partner, make more of an appearance in their kid's life. 
And I think that's what I would do if I was in that situation. Comedy duo The Flight of the Concords have joined that rare club of New Zealanders to win a Grammy. Multiple Emmy nominations too. Jermaine's acting credits include Eagle vs Shark, Men in Black 3, as well as voiceovers for Despicable Me, Rio and Moana. Well, Tomatoa hasn't always been this glam. I was a drab little crab wife. He'll appear in the upcoming Avatar sequels, but one of his earliest roles was as a glue sniffer. I, I can never tell if people can tell I'm Māori or not, but when the producers know that I'm Māori, they're like, oh, he can play the little Māori glue sniffer. I've never, I've never sniffed that stuff in my life, <laughs> you know. Um, and I don't like that stereotype. So uh, that's a thing you have to be careful of, I think, you know. Has being a fair-skinned Māori given you a bit of a role as a sleeper? Have you been able to hear stuff? Or? Not so much now, but um, in the 80s, in the, you, know, you would hear what people, um, you know, what Pākehā people might think of certain Māori traditions that they might not say if they knew I was Māori. Yeah. Your favourite animal is a shark? Yep. I almost came as a shark actually, but then I realised that an eagle's slightly better. Do you want to leave a message for him? Tell him that justice is waiting for him. OK, Justin, thank you, bye-bye. No justice. So how did you get into acting? I'm one of those classic people, you know, classic story of someone who wasn't really a shot off at school or anything like that, but I wanted to, so, you know, I did some school shows and stuff like that. That's a bit of a thing, eh, because I remember meeting um, Tui Tika and Billy T. James, yeah, and hilarious on stage, and then you kind of meet them, they're kind of shy. Yeah. I know people see me as an actor, maybe, because that's the bit on screen, but most of... Um, most of the year is spent at a computer and you think of it, you write it out, you go back, try and make it better, go back, try and make it better. And, you know, that's, that's what my job is. Hey, Dad. Yes, son. I thought today was a lot of fun. While Jermaine took drama and film classes at Victoria University, oh, off campus, he was already nailing it on stage with his mates. It's impressive if I've cooked at all. You know, me and Taika and Brett and other friends of ours were doing shows anyway. And then eventually I went, I'll just do that. Hello. Hello, man, sitting in the park. I've just said hi. Do you reckon the New Zealand audiences are tough? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're toughest, yeah. <laughs> they're tough. They're not expecting anything good. Sometimes people in the early days would say, oh, I wanted to laugh so much. <laughs> but? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But oh, no one else started, so... Well, uh, yeah, I decided not to. <laughs> but, um, you know, well, firstly, they're reticent. They don't want to they don't want to stand out. Whereas, you know, in America, they're just, wah! As soon as you get up there. Coming up after the break, should we make fun of racism? And what happens when you meet your musical icon? show my support. You might not want to wear a t-shirt that says how much of a racist you are. <laughs> no thanks. I'm racist on the inside. But you can laugh at racist comments. It does the same thing. <laughs> I'm not sure if you were part of this campaign, but Tyker and I both were. It was like, give nothing to racism. Mm -hmm. And so the conversation no, was... I'm very pro-racism, so <laughs> I wouldn't touch that one. <laughs> Should we make fun of racism do we disempower racist behaviour by doing so or by making jokes about racism, do we normalise it? Uh, I, yeah, I, well, people read it differently, yeah. you know, when you make a joke about racism. They might relate to the racist character and that sometimes you can be surprised by that. Uh, in my first writing job, um, you know, we were making fun of the homophobic classic Kiwi bloke and 
most people got it, but then people, homophobic people liked it as well. They were like, um, yeah, 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 I see myself. That, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Is there a line in comedy that you don't cross? You know, there's jokes that I've done on stage and then found out that it, it might have um, connected in a bad way with someone's traumatic memory and then go, oh, okay, I'm not going to do that joke again because I didn't think of that, you know. I suppose we're in a kind of an era now too when there seems to be a lot more sensitivity to things, eh? Yeah, that's a great topic. Good question. It would be great if we could joke about anything and, um, you know, you, sometimes you aren't, you don't hear a challenging idea till a comedian says it or makes you think about something differently. But personally, I don't like people to get uncomfortable when, when they're mm. listening to something I've made, but um, that's just me. Well, we're, inform me of this. Where have you guys been? A lot of people have been, haven't seen you guys together since 2009 mm -hmm. when you had your second season of your show on HBO, which was the biggest thing in comedy for those two years you guys were on. W where have you been? W where'd you go? Do you remember? Um, <laughs> we've just been, just been getting ready for tonight. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what was the reaction when you first pitched Flight of the Concords to producers here in New Zealand? Oh. Uh. <laughs> Not that interesting. They call me the hip hop apotomist. My lyrics are bottomless. At the time, we had a few offers. You know, we had, we were offered to make a pilot in the UK, one in the US, but we wanted to live here. Um, so we pitched one here, thinking, well, if they want it over there, they'll want it here, surely. We're from here. The humans are dead. They look like they're dead. Just confirm that they're dead. So we could have fun. Affirmative. I poked one, it was dead. But no, they let us write it. We wrote a script. Um, but of course, our whole careers are based on that decision to go and make that show in America. All right, have you guys ever had hurt feelings? Some people say the rappers don't have feelings. We have feelings. We have feelings. Were, were you surprised by the reaction? When New Zealanders would hear the New Zealand accent, they're like, oh, I'm not going to listen to this. <laughs> but it's like, they don't have that um, concern there. I got hurt feelings, I got hurt feelings. I feel like a prize asshole. No one even mentions my casserole. Our shows just got bigger and bigger, and uh, it was a massive surprise. How did you keep your feet on the ground? Uh, it got hard there for a while. Um, not exactly getting a big head, just all the attention. Uh, I don't think, ne yeah, neither Brett or I particularly liked it, but we, we like making comedy. Have you ever been starstruck yourself? I met Prince. I was Stop it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was very starstruck. And, did he um, talk to you though? He did. Did he? Yeah. Because you were not meant to address him. That... That's what I was told, but that, it didn't turn out to be true. Someone said, don't shake his hand. I was like, okay, don't shake his hand, don't shake his Give hand. Give him a hongi. Didn't do that. <laughs> I don't know, what do you think? The trouble with being a vampire is you have to be invited in. Jermaine's co-directing debut was on What We Do in the Shadows. We need some fresh blood. Hi, my name is Nick. I've been a vampire for two months. <laughs> Big fan here. Thank you. Loved it. And then you took it to the States and translated that into a series. How mm -hmm. challenging was that? Master, this is pretty macabre. <laughs> <laughs> In some ways it was easy. You've got a really great cast and, I, you know, I'd done it once before and there are things I thought we could have done in the movie that we can throw in the series. Maybe the American studio system didn't really sit with our collaborative style, um, our kind of marae style of uh, all pitching in together. Mm. Um, and so I'm taking a break from that show in the third season. Mm. So I'm not writing for that one, working on a new show. 
Germain was a co-creator producer for Wellington Paranormal. Over the last few years, there's been a rise in the number of incidents that cannot be classified as normal. They have to be considered paranormal. paranormal. I made them their own special folder. It's quite thick. What do you enjoy most, performing, um, writing, directing? Well, writing, I get most excited about in the beginning. And then while I'm on my 10th draft, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Do you think, oh, the first one was actually the better one? Never. No. Never? It always gets better mm. with another draft, you know, working on it, honing it. Mm. Yeah. Kate was in my very first class ever as a professor. How's your book doing? Not as good as I would have hoped. What would you think about teaching here? Teaching here? It would be nice to have you here again, Kate. Is your mum um, surprised with how you've fared in the world of arts? Oh, yeah, it's a good question. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, at least when I grew up, we were very working class. You know, everyone worked in factories. My mum worked in factories, my dad, my grandparents. Um, so I guess, yes. But also, there was no kind of pressure to um, follow in any family footsteps. They don't mind if I'm not working in a factory. You take her overseas sometimes to shows? Uh, took her to the Emmys. <laughs> this is yeah. This is on. This is live TV. Are you surprised that we were nominated? <laughs> no, I'm not surprised you're nominated. But are you surprised at how well you're it's taken over here in America? Okay, I got to admit, I'm 80 percent surprised. Thank okay. you. It must have been fun taking it to the end. Oh yeah, because she watches all these TV shows. <laughs> I don't watch them. I don't know who anyone is, at the, you know, at the Emmys, but she knows all the shows. Sometimes to get what you want, you have to not want what you want. Think about it. How are you coping with the slower pace? I think last year um, I realised I was pushing myself too hard and doing too many things. You know, I had this show in, um, in America, which I was in charge of, as well as one here, um, and it was too much. And uh, whenever I needed to stop travelling, I appreciated that and took a step back and going, oh, I don't need to, I don't need to be going so hard all the time. Thank you, Jermaine. Really looking forward to seeing you in the Avatar. Oh, good. Yes. Avatar two and three. Hopefully, you'll get the uh, the call back again. Unlike that, sixiest man of the year. Oh yeah. Well, you know, once is probably enough. I guess that was my peak, 2008.